Good morning to those watching online. I guess I'll give those a few minutes to get seated that are still chatty patties back here in the background. And I think Felco back here got a guitar malfunction, not to be confused with a wardrobe malfunction. Um, wow, it quieted down pretty fast. I'm impressed. I wish my kids would listen that good. Maybe I just need a microphone with me. All right, so now that everybody's settled, um, again, good morning. And uh, for those who were here or those who may have watched uh, a few weeks ago, and real quick, if you haven't noticed for the last two years, each one of us uh, deacons um, has taken a week of the month. Mine is every third Wednesday. So if you go back to last month's third Wednesday, it is when I spoke. Um, and I spoke about sacrifice, um, you know, and God calling us all to give up, you know, potentially whatever that is in our lives because the Christian walk isn't always easy. And in those verses, I use Matthew 19, 21. And in this story of Matthew 19, 21, Jesus is talking to a rich young ruler who basically said he kept all of God's commandments. So Jesus in Matthew 19, 21 said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you have treasure in heaven and come follow me. In 1922, we read, but when the rich young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So along with sacrifice comes one thing that is very important and that's choice. Are we gonna choose to make that sacrifice? Or are we gonna choose to not make those sacrifices? Jesus, when he is in the garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, 39, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. We know that we're in the Lenten season and Easter is coming upon us. And we know what we celebrate with Easter is the death and resurrection of our Lord, Savior, and Jesus Christ. This verse stuck out to me because in that same moment, Jesus also had a choice. Jesus coming down from the heavens lived a sinless life here on this earth and chose to go to the cross. And we've all probably seen the passion or different stories of Jesus being illustrated. To know that Jesus made that choice for each and every one of us, he made that ultimate sacrifice. More so than you or I have ever made, more so than the disciples who started the first church have ever made. And in, in finishing in Revelation 3.16, it says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither hot or neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This verse also stuck to me as well because we've heard this one taught many, many times. And something really clicked with me on this one is Jesus is saying here, neither cold nor hot. He's not saying he's going to vomit you out because you're cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm. So you're not, in that definition of me, you're not making the sacrifices Jesus is asking you to make. You're not making the choices that Jesus is asking you to make because you're living a lukewarm life. And we see a lot of that in today's American church um, and probably in the church worldwide, but I can only speak of the American church. I've never been outside of this country. But we see things creeping into the church that aren't supposed to be in the church. So are we truly making the sacrifices that God has called us to make? You know, when you think about it, when something's cold, we're getting into the summer months. A cold pool is refreshing. A cold drink of iced tea, Mike Turner's, is delicious and refreshing. The winter months are just behind us. Hot chocolate is refreshing. Hot coffee is refreshing. So Jesus isn't saying he's gonna spit you out because you're hot or cold, because you're lukewarm. So when you think about the sacrifices that Jesus is laying before you to make, I just ask, are you making the right choices in those decisions? So Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come into your house, Lord, and those who are present here and even those who are watching at home right now, Lord, for whatever reason, they're still at home watching. They've made the choice, Lord, to reserve this day as a day to give you thanks and sing praises unto your name for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We know the things around us, Lord, are, are just whatever they are, Father God, but we just right now just turn those all over to you, giving praise and glory to the Most High God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just praise you and thank you, and we come to lift your name on high this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? How are we doing today? Amen. You know, 
I was thinking that, uh, you know, we come, we bring all of our junk, all of our stuff, all of our worries, all of our cares. Do you know that you can make an exchange this morning for something better than that? So come on, wanting to stand, come on. Amen. Purpose your heart to enter into whatever you're dealing with. Sickness, sorrow, shame, fear, whatever. God's got something else for you this morning. Amen.
revelation of your glory, revelation of your goodness, God.
to see today and just need a touch from you. Come on, slip out of your seat. Just come up to the altar. Just come on, lift those hands up high. Come on, confess it today. I am dry and thirsty. Touch your life, refresh you. Hallelujah. Oh, you're here today. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I need your cleansing now. It's a weary land. Hallelujah. Lord, bring your touch upon our land again. To this dry. Let it rain, let it rain. 
willing to confess that this morning. It's not being religious. Come on, he's willing just to say, I need it. Come on, if you really need it, shout it out. Let him hear it. I need it. I need it, Lord. I need some today. anymore pretending everything is okay putting on a front just pretending everything is good when we know deep down inside Lord we're empty to stay in your pride, that's okay. Hallelujah. But he gives grace. He gives mercy. Someone lift up praise unto his name today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I give you all the honor and the praise that's due. For you are the King of glory, the Creator of all things. Come on, let's do this this morning. Come on. Let's put aside religion. Come on. Let's, hallelujah. We just come just, just because, well, it's Sunday, it is church, and that's what we do. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, just give it to him this morning. Hallelujah. I give you all 
The creator of all things, as your spirit moves upon me now, you meet my deepest need, and I.
in my in my mind in my spirit hallelujah I just see all the angels all those in heaven just just bowing down before the king of kings I hope you haven't done that yet okay if you just get down on your knees if you can if you can't that's okay but if you can just get down on your knees and just thank him he is so good he is so good he's so good lord i bow my knees to you i bow my heart to you
lift your hands to him. Lift your heart. I will give you. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. Let's just lift our hands in this place. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. triumphed hallelujah the one who is seated at the right hand of the father hallelujah hallelujah praise you oh lord hallelujah let's lift up the name of jesus hallelujah the name of jesus you are high and exalted you are seated at the right hand of the father far above all rulers hallelujah far above the earth far above all kingdoms and kings hallelujah you are the king of the earth you are the king of all hallelujah let's worship him church worship him hallelujah hallelujah praise you oh lord hallelujah thank you jesus yes jesus hallelujah thank you lord there is no one like you lord god we stand in all of you lord jesus this day god we stand in all lord jesus you are one father i pray right now for every heart in this place that the eyes of our heart would be opened in the name of jesus that we can see that you are high and lifted up over all over all the earth, over all the kingdoms and kings of this world, you are the exalted one, Lord, and we worship you this morning. May your name be glorified, hallelujah. And I pray, Lord, I thank you that the shout of the king is among us because we are your purchased possession, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ. And I just pray for every heart this morning, let them be uplifted, lift up our eyes, Lord, lift up our countenance, Lord, to see you you high and exalted and lifted up oh lord we love you we worship you let your holy spirit come and move among us for we are your church hallelujah hallelujah oh yes lord you are you are our king hallelujah Hallelujah. If you need a touch from him this morning, I just want to ask you right where you are, just reach out to him in faith. He's right here. He is in our midst this morning. If you need a touch in your body, if you need a touch in your spirit, if you need deliverance this morning, deliverance from fear, deliverance from shame, just reach out to him because he is in our midst. He is walking through this place. His eyes are open and upon you this morning. If you need a touch from him, reach out in faith right now and receive what you need from him. Hallelujah. You are our source, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, teach us, God, that all we need is in you. We don't need anything else, Lord, other than you. You're the one we need, Lord. You have provided us everything that we need. Healing, wholeness, salvation, peace, reassurance, confidence. You have purchased it all on the cross, and it is ours in Christ. We receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And all God's people, all God's people said amen. amen. Come on, remain standing. And amen. The Lord's not done yet. Come on, he's not done. 
There's a song that we're going to sing that someone needs to hear. This is for someone this morning. It's for every single one of us, but there's someone here this morning who needs to hear this.
this morning. struggling with this. Some of you are struggling with this this morning. So we just need to do some warfare this morning. Come on, we'd, come on, we need to help someone this morning because they're just, they're just believing that they're a mistake, that their lives is a waste. Come on, we're going to sing it. We're going to sing it loud and we're going to play it loud. You're time to put an end to the enemies, his lies and his deceits. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to do a couple things here real quick because we need to get into the word because what we're going to talk about this morning, I believe is critical, probably one of the most important messages that God has ever given me. And so we're going to just do we're going to do a buddy barrel real quick, okay? We're going to do a buddy barrel real quick. We ain't going to rap, 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 and talk and talk. We're just going to come up and bring your chain, drop it in there. We'll give you an M&M, &M, go back to your seat. Amen? Amen. Jason's going to come up, and he's just going to share a little bit about what's going to be happening next weekend. So, Jason, come on, while we're giving our buddy barrel, Jason, come on up and just, just, just lay it on us, okay? Amen? Amen. 
Praise God. Well, we're going to multitask, apparently, right? We're going to move God. right through this quickly because we know how distracting that we can be sometimes. We okay. do. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> well, I think we all know. So uh, next, this upcoming Saturday and Sunday, okay, we have an awesome healing evangelist coming to our church. This guy has an awesome testimony. I wasn't here last week, but you guys all watched the testimony, right, of Mike Hesh? Yes. Amen. He had a grotesque tumor on his chest. This thing was right from the pit of hell, and glory to God, the Lord miraculously delivered him from it. Amen? Praise God. So we're so pumped. We're so excited. The Lord has put a word on Mike's heart. He is so pumped to come here and uh, preach the word of God. He's been promoting it on his YouTube channel and the different things that he's associated with. I think he's more excited than we are. So <laughs> praise God. So we're so pumped about that church. Just be praying about this. Be thinking about this and be inviting people. Anybody that you know that needs a touch from the Lord, anybody that you know that needs to be introduced to the power of God, maybe you know people that really don't know about healing or miracles or they think it's just, you know, God still doesn't do that kind of thing. Well, guess what? He does. And we're going to prove it next week. Praise God. Amen. All right, Pastor. Okay, ladies, um, Women of Purpose, we had said Wednesday that the registration wouldn't, you know, sign up by then, but we found out um, that if you're interested in lunch, we have to do it like yesterday, <laughs> okay? So please, if you want to go, sign up right now. Even if you don't have your money, please just sign up because I am going to register this afternoon. So... It is $15 for students, single moms with kids, seniors, military, or widowed, $20 for adults. The lunch is an optional $10. Um, you can bring your own lunch, so you don't have to have that. And there are T-shirts that are available for an extra $15. So, um, but if you want to go, please sign up and then also um, put lunch, okay? So I just know to register you for that. All right, thank you. Now, now we got power. Power to the people. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, you know that God is in the house. I mean, he's always here. You know, the Bible tells us where two or three are gathering in his name, he's in our midst. But there's sometimes just the manifest presence is just a little bit more. It's like, you know, like you go into a room and there's like a 60-watt bulb, and then you go into another time and someone changed the bulb and put a 100-watt bulb. And it's like, whoa, you know. And then somebody comes in and then takes a 100-watt bulb and puts in a 25. Well, well, I tell you what, it just, it just, just the presence of God is in this place. If you, if you did, if you, if you're not really sensing this, then, <coughs> um, um, well, then you just need to hang around, because it's, you know, uh, God is doing a work, and He'll do a work in you if you're open, if you'll let Him. If you won't let Him, that's fine. You know, He'll just, you know, He'll hit your neighbor, but He'll leave you alone. Okay. And um, but I pray that I pray that you're hungry for God's word because we're going to deal with something that's critical this morning. Like I said before, I'm not trying to pump this up any more than what I'm pumped up this morning. But I believe this is probably one of the most important messages for over the many years that I've been here that I've shared. And so we're going to con continue on a little bit of last week. So in Luke chapter 21. I begin to start reading at verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, 
<clears throat> and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. And, you know, I, I'm sure Luke could have gone on and added a few more things, you know, in which we know that some of the other writers do. Uh, seas and the waves roaring. In verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear. And the expectation, it's like, you know, we're just, <laughs> you know, you know, we're just expecting things to be worse. You know, how many of you like when you get news about something, you just expect bad news? You know, it's never like good news, you know. You know, you know, someone called me on my phone, and maybe it's my brother or my sister or someone that I know. And don't our minds just go to, I, I'm just expecting what? Bad news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, praise God. And I know that's just kind of our human nature. It, and men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then, you see in verse 27, the word then. You see, there's a time lapse, okay, obviously. And so, if you read up further, it talks about the desolation of the temple, which, which actually that was destroyed in A.D. 70. And from A.D. 70 until the, until the time that the Lord comes and gets his church, this is what he's talking about right there. But then, then you will see the Son of Man coming. Amen. Praise God. Coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. And we're looking forward to that day, but we're not in that day yet. We're in the preceding days. Amen? When there's perplexity, when there's expectations, when men's hearts will fail them for fear, and particularly as we're talking to believers this morning. But let me tell you, the world out there, their hearts is failing them for fear too, and they don't know where to go. I mean, fear has gripped our world either through COVID or through wars or through, through the economics and through so on and so forth. And many people don't know what to do. And guess what, folks? We got the answer. But if we're bound up in fear ourselves, we're no good to no one. Then the Son of Man will come in the cloud with great power and glory. Now, when you see these things, now when these things begin to happen... Now, I believe that he's reverting back to what he just said before. When you begin to see those things happening, church, let's not, let's not fall back. You know, let's not give in to fear. Let's not give in to what's going on around us with what our eyes see. We need God to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can really see that this is the hour for the church, for the church to shine the most because he is coming back. Amen. When you see these things happen, look up. Stop looking down. Stop being depressed. Stop being full of fear and, and awe and wonder of what's happening in your life. Know that there's an answer. Amen? Jesus is the answer. And you need to be filled with God these days. Those who are just partway filled with God may not make it through. Borderline Christians will not make it in these last days. And I believe they will only increasingly get more difficult for us. There may come a time where, I mean, a time that we will be forbidden to meet together. You understand that's on the horizon? What will we do? Will we continue to stand or will we just fall like dominoes. <coughs> now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. In other words, man, God's bringing it all to an end. Amen? Hallelujah. Can I tell you there's a happy ever after ending? Amen? Amen. You know, just like all those stories, you know, there's a bunch of mess in, be, in, in, the, in the middle, okay? But guess what? It ends well. And this fear that we have talked about last week, this spirit of fear, the enemy uses to, to paralyze, and to grip our hearts, and is rooted in what we're going to talk about this morning, lies and deception. It is the false narratives that you listen to. 
when whatever is going on in your life, it is the false narratives that, that are whispered into your head that you feed upon, that you dwell on, that plant fear and paranoia and give way to despair, worry, anxiety, depression, addictions, and et cetera, et cetera. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And what you need to understand is this here. There, there is no fear in the love of God. God does not operate on the level of fear. Now, we need to fear God. Amen? If we not, let's, let, let's, let's not misunderstand that. But God doesn't use fear. God doesn't use sickness. God doesn't use these things to try to get our attention. Okay? We need to understand that fear and unbelief and confusion and all the other stuff that the enemy tries to do, another thing that he tries to do is the spirit of offense is flicking the house of God. It is the work of the enemy. And when we give into it, we give in to his work. We actually, he just loves it when, when Christians are promoting his business. <laughs> Don't you like it when people promote your business by telling them how great you are, how you did such a great job, and boy, I would recommend your company to anybody? Well, the devil just loves it when we just go around and just tell him all the good things that he's doing to us. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, pour it on. Ephesians chapter 6, if you turn to your Bibles there, please. <coughs> I know we put this stuff on the screen, but if you, if you don't know where these books are in the Bible and you, you've been saved for a while, man, you, you just, you're just like, you're, can I just tell you that you're fodder? I just love, I love Star Wars. Anybody like, anybody like Star Wars? Yeah. Remember the last one, the Bantam Fodder? You know, that, I just love it when that one, when that one dude just, <laughs> just falls right into it. You know, and, and that's what we do. We just fall right into it. We fall, and we become food for that beast that comes up out of that, that hole. Remember that? Okay, almost took up Han Solo. Sorry about that. But some of you need to see stuff like that and realize that's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to swallow you up. And he swallows you up because you're ignorant. Can I just say that in love? There's no reason for any of us in this room not to have a, a thorough understanding of God's word. Not today. Now maybe in the day of the apostles in the early church, they didn't have the Bible that we have now. They don't have recorders. They don't have DVDs. They don't have the internet. You can just turn it on and you can listen to it. My goodness gracious, if you don't read well. There's no reason for the ignorance of God's word. And it's the ignorance of God's word that the enemy capitalizes on you. Because you've heard stuff and it sounds good, but it's not the truth. You've heard half-truths. You've heard some preacher, some slick speak. The Bible tells us, warns us ahead of time. They will come. And they will what? They will pervert the gospel, the simple truths of God's word. They'll make it sound like it's so real, just like Satan does. Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. One of the interesting meanings of this word has got several different meanings, but one of, the word, one of the words, one of it means simply the lies. And I was looking this up under Webster's, you know, it's good... You know, it's a good dictionary, okay? There, I mean, there's other ones. And basically, the noun form of the word, one who, one who works in the, in, in the pursuit of wiling somebody, is one who is skillful in outwitting someone. And let me tell you, the enemy, if you do not know the word of God, the enemy will outwit you every time. <laughs> I mean, you can't stand against him. Okay? He's skillful in deceit and trickery and cunningness of words. In Genesis, remember 
Going, going back to Genesis chapter 3, that, that's, that's where it all, that's really, you know, a wonderful beginning. Chapters 1 and 2, paradise, amen. But chapter 3, paradise lost. And, but just in the first verse, we see this. Now the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to woman, now this, and he said to a woman, has God indeed said, has Satan ever said that to you? Does the Bible really mean that? Did you really hear that? Did God really say that? You know, that, you know, oh boy, he does it all. I know he does. You cannot eat of every tree of the garden. Is that what God said? That's not what God said. Amen? God said you can eat of every tree of the garden, except for what? Oh, he's so cunning, so slick, so slick, and we just fall into it because what? Well, well, I, I, well, 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 maybe he really didn't say that. Maybe he did say we could eat of every tree of the garden. Well, why not? He made it. It's good. Why not? God made wine. God made liquor. God made drugs. Why not? God made it. Why not? It must be good. And the enemy just, boy, he just whoops all over you, you know? Oh, yeah, well, I, I you know. Well, today, I, I, I just feel like, I, I feel like being a woman. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, the Apostle Paul writing in Corinthians. Uh, Book of Corinthians was written to a church probably just like us. They had all kinds of problems. <laughs> <laughs> they had sexual problems. They had, they had, you know, they had hero worship. You know, they had confusion, and they had the abuse of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and all. Just they, they were just a mess. Okay, and but listen to what Paul says in Second Corinthians, which is actually his third letter to Corinthians, if you don't realize that. But it's Second Corinthians, as we have it. Chapter 11, verse 3. Listen to what he says to the Corinthians. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds have become corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The word is not, the word of God is not that hard. We like options. We like angles. Psalms 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And yet, like Adam and Eve, we listen, we get confused. And then we begin to believe. And yet oftentimes we don't even recognize that's the enemy. It could be a friend. And most likely it probably is a friend. Someone that you like. Someone you trust. It could be someone you listen to on the radio. I don't know. Who, who knows? The enemy has many emissaries. And because we do not stand upon the word of God, we, we give in. A thought gives way to a foothold that gives way to a strong Anybody understand what a stronghold is? When well, you're bound. It began long ago by what? A foothold. Because you open, you open that door a little bit to thoughts, to philosophies, to a mindset, to an educator, to a friend, to a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case might be. And you listen to them and you begin to believe what they were saying was more valid than what God's word says about being staying pure and being holy. Very interesting. We were watching a little bit of the, about the most boring people in the world today. They had four categories. They had four things listed about the most boring people in the world. You know what number two was? People are, and they, and they used the word religious. <laughs> Isn't that, is that crazy? Praise God. Yeah, yeah, bored is good. I, I, I've had enough excitement in 68 
almost 69 years. I don't need any more excitement. And most of that excitement I created in myself by believing, believing that I could just do things myself. You know, I, I, you know, the devil does, the devil is real. Do you know that? He is real. And, and it seems like people have either gone two ways with the devil today. There's, there doesn't seem to be like a balance. We always seem to go from one pendulum to the other pendulum. And you, and you see this in the body of Christ sometimes. And I think that where we are today, it, because it was, was back in the 80s and 90s, you had devil hunters, demon hunters. They were on the search for anyone who, who, who might have been demon possessed to, to exercise them of demons. Remember that in the body of Christ? Everybody's got a demon. Uh, under every rock, there's a demon. <laughs> under everything, you know. And so it's like, you know, you, you know, we have this crazy overemphasis that everything is demon possessed and everyone's demon possessed. But now I believe that we swung to the place where, hey, the devil, he's just, he's just irrelevant. Well, he's somewhere in the middle, Okay. Satan does exist. There is evil in this world. It's obvious. We just say, well, it's just the world. Well, the Bible tells us the spirit that is at work in this world. Ephesians chapter 2. See, we don't know the word of God. We don't understand that there's a spirit that is working. It is at work continuously in this world. And it is totally opposed. It is totally opposed to God. It, it hates God. Satan's mission while Jesus was alive was to what? Was to destroy him. He thought he did. <laughs> How little did he know? He was the de deceiver was deceived. Amen? <laughs> okay? Isn't it cool when the deceiver gets deceived? Go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We think it is. There's a spirit that is working in, 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 in those like Putin and others, and Hitler and Stalin and mad men like that. Okay, there's a spirit that is at work in, even in those in our own country and, and so forth, okay? <coughs> For we not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in every high places, and most of us want to shut our Bibles and never open it up again and see that again. Because that's pretty daunting. Doesn't that sound pretty daunting to you? Whoa, what do you mean? Against principalities, again. I don't even know what some of these things mean, but they sound pretty bad, don't they? <laughs> principalities and powers and rulers and... and where, is, where, where does this all happen? What well, happens in the spirit realm? Wickedness in heavenly places. You know, to ignore the realities of these things and it's foolish. Actually, it's just plain stupid. You know, I want to really explain a little bit about these powers, these principalities, and these rulers, and these rulers, host of wickedness. I believe that if you open your eyes and stick your head out of the sand, get your head out of the sand, open your eyes, and you will see, you will see how these things are working every single day systematically. We see them working in our universities and our colleges. You know, recent, recently a study was done about evangelical people who are raised in church. You know, we understand that a lot of, you know, teenagers when they graduate from high school, they're not necessarily really thoroughly equipped and ready for college. You know, spiritually, they might be academically, but oftentimes not. But it's been said that nearly 90% of all church kids that end up going to college deny God or walk away from God by the time they're finished. Why? Because this has faced the reality of even though I believe that we need to have education, we need to be trained, and I'm not against all that kind of stuff, but, but who's, what's, Who's at work in much of our educational systems? Look at, uh, look at even in our elementary and our secondary schools, okay? And the things that are being, being taught, things that are being presented to kindergartens and first graders. Television. Just think of television. I remember when television first started. I remember the first TV when my dad 
brought it into the room, you know, brought, brought it into our house and, you know, looking at, you know, things like I Love Lucy. Anybody remember I Love Lucy? I may really love I Love Lucy, man. She's awesome, right? Man, she if, she, if there was a trouble she could get into, she got in it, amen? And how about Bonanza? Oh, hallelujah. How about Matt Dillon? Gunsmoke. Oh, you know, great. Leave it to Beaver. You know, te- television, you know, focus, this is just, it's just, it's just be, be honest, tell, you know, television, when it was created, was focused upon entertainment. And, mi- and many of it was, was family, family values, even though maybe it wasn't Christian family. Remember Leave it to Beaver? Oh, you know, oh, Cleve. Was it Cleve? Cleaver. Cleve was the dad, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh that, okay. Uh, wh- whoever the dad was, whatever his name was, okay, you know, he was like, man, he was like, man, he was like the dad we all wanted, amen, wasn't he? I mean, he was like there, you know, the, you know, the boys could talk to him about anything, you know, and he just didn't tell him, get away from me, I've got, got no time for you, you know, or something like that. I mean, he was the dad we all dreamed we would have, right? I mean, television was like, it was, it was you know, it was kind of, there was a purity to it, you know, and yet we look at television today. Look at the cable, look at the streaming, look at these things that we can see on TV. The very pits of the very pits of hell, the very gates of hell can come right into our home. Who who's at work in that, you think? Men that are men and women who are who minds are who minds are possessed by money and power at the expense of any morals or the lives of young people. Impressionable people that present present lifestyles and choices that are <laughs> You don't think there's powers and principalities and spiritual hosts and wickedness in the high places working in our country? You better think again. And you better think about what and how you're responding to them and the example that you're setting by the things that you watch. I'm going to talk about, talk about the internet, the world wide web. What a, it changed. It changed our world. Amen, didn't it? And obviously, you know, hey, well, you know, when I need to know something, I just Google it. Praise God, you know. If it's just raw information, I can deal with it. We be, but look at the stuff with that phone. Look at TikTok, Snapchat. Six-year-old, five-year-old, ten-year-olds, twelve-year-olds addicted to pornography before they even understand sexuality. You don't think there's a devil who's trying to kill, steal, and destroy? There's a devil. And he's working. He's at work. He's at work in this last age, very, very different than it was 2,000 years ago. It doesn't change his tactic. Now it's through what? Through many of these mediums. And I could go into politics. Look at the evil in politics. You think that Satan's not behind some of that? What about religion and how religion has become just nothing more than what religion was when Jesus came? You know, and of course, we can always, you know, think back, well, you know, well, we're better for these things. Let me ask you a question. Are schools better without prayer and word? You think the life of a baby in the womb is not a life? See, the only way that we're going to combat these things, let me just tell you, my friends, because if you, if you're, if you go out to battle ill-equipped, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to suffer the consequences. You're not going to be able to stand against those principalities and those powers, because let me just tell you, they're smarter than you, but God's word, God's word will never fail you. God's word has the authority. He's got the final authority over everything, but if we don't know his word, then you go out and you will, not, you will not last. You know, did the devil tempted Jesus? He tempted Jesus and, and opposed him throughout his entire ministry. Okay, and we you particularly know of the time when he tempted him in the wilderness. Remember that? And how did Jesus respond to him? And I want to remind you of this. It was after 40 days of fasting. <laughs> okay. It wasn't before, it was after 40 days of fasting that Satan came when he was at what? Probably a very vulnerable place, mentally, emotionally, physically. 
And that's where oftentimes the enemy becomes to us when we are, when we are mentally, emotionally, and physically what we can through temptations, through testing, through sickness, and whatever. It usually doesn't come to you when you're in your finest hour. He comes when you're down and you're depressed and you just lost your job. We got the news from the doctor. This Yet he stood, he stood against him. He stood against the lies because everything that Satan said was a lie. It was a perversion of the word of God. And Jesus combated him by the word of God. And, and guess what? He will, the devil will try to do the same thing to you. As a matter of fact, he's probably succeeded often. Jesus said in John 8, 44, we don't have that verse up on the screen. You don't need to pull it up, Falco. I'm just going to read from... In the middle it says, for there is, no, there is no truth in him. Jesus is talking about Satan. There is no truth in him when he speaks a lie. He speaks from his own resources. Because this is who he is. For he is a liar and he is the father, the one who gives birth to lies. Mm. See, if you're a believer, if you're born again, if you're saved by the, by the grace of God through faith, that, you know, the devil can't, can't kill you. He can't make you an addict. He cannot add one inch to your life or even take, take away one inch. He can't destroy your marriage. He can't destroy your health. He has zero power. He's not omnipotent. We think the devil's omnipotent. Some of you know, he's, he's, not like, he's, he's like equal to God. No, he's not. <laughs> it's a far from it. We think he's all, all knowing that he has created powers. He is limited. And all he can do is lie. That's all he can do is lie to you and say it's okay. Go ahead. Just, 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 you need that to calm yourself down. You need that to get through this day. You need this to get this through, through this time. You need to have an affair because you're not whatever. On, on and on and on and on. He just, he just messes with us. All he can do is lie to you. When you stop believing the word and start believing the lies you reap, then you reap the consequences. See, he didn't put that on you. It was the lies and deception that opened the door for those things to come upon you. You understand that. And what you're dealing with today and the, and the results of of your situation, whatever it might be, is because it, it, it began with a lie that you believed that it was okay. It's okay for you to drink. It's okay to you have a drink now and again, but yet it, it goes on beyond just now and again, doesn't it? It's okay. And of course, we always like throw off the one, well, he'll, he'll forgive me, and praise God, he does forgive. But do you know how many lives have been destroyed? And how your life and your marriage, one bad choice, one bad evening, being, being someplace you shouldn't be at the, right, at the wrong time, can all of a sudden forever change your life. Because what? You believed in a lie. It was okay. 2 Timothy 1.7, for it says, For God has not given us fear, spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I'm going to finish this up here real quick. In James 4.7, it says, Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, if you're not submitted to God, you can just do all the resisting you want to do. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. N notice the order there. Submit to God. And to be submitted to God is to come under the authority of his word. Can I just tell you that? If you're not under the authority of God's word, you're not submitted to him. You need to hear this this morning. And I know that, you know, hey, you know, we can go to church someplace else and hear something that, man, you're just, you know, you're just all that in a bag of chips and whatever. A feel-good sort of message. And praise God, I like those feel-good messages. But that's not what I need sometimes. Sometimes I need to be sat down and be told the truth. And the truth is that if you're not under the authority of God's word, and yet how can you be under the authority of God's word when, when you don't even know it? You don't even know basic precepts of his word. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
Therefore, submit to God. Submit to his word. Submit to his authority. That word there, submission, speaks of what? Submitting to authority, coming under someone. You can't be, you can't be submitted to God and, and yet be your own ball, your own guy, your own girl. Do your own thing whenever you want. You're not submitted to God. And so then when things happen, then you wonder, well, I can, I'll just resist the devil, but then the devil just keeps working and just keeps working. Why? Because you haven't submitted to him. It's a game that you play. And let me tell you, it's a game that Satan plays a whole lot better than you. And he'll string you along until you're strung out. Until your rope breaks. And you think, oh, God doesn't love me anymore. Where's God? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So on and so forth. So how do you resist the devil? Well, you submit to his word. You get that report that from wherever and all the thing, all of a sudden things go wild in your mind. And, you know, voices. We start hearing voices and have you ever been tempted to say, well, God let me down? God didn't let you down. Well, he didn't do his own thing. Well, he doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> you, know? you know, can you just, oh, my goodness. You know, he saw what I did, and now he's punishing me. And because there's such a void of the word of God, we can't combat. Therefore, what? Put on the armor of, the full armor of God but we can't combat and we fall into prey the very things that we fear rather than taking authority over them and speaking the word. See, it's lies and deception that embolden the enemy. And that's all he's got. He's got nothing else but lies. That's all he got. All he can do is lie to you. He can't do anything. I want to share, we're going to close, I want to share with you a couple of verses. I mean, they're going to totally blow you away. If, but if you will grasp them and get a hold of them and get a whole bunch of other scriptures and start feeding your spirit man who can speak to your soul and command your body to fall in line. You wonder why your body's just going off doing its own thing because it's, got, it's not being commanded through the spirit of God. Your soul, your unredeemed, untransformed mind but when your mind is being redeemed and transformed, then you can tell your body, no, you're not doing that anymore. Amen. Well, if I don't do that anymore, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, the other thing's going to happen, and then of all, the devil just talks you right out of it. Lies and deception. He can't do any. He has no power over you. He has no power. This whole thing that the devil made me do it, that I'm under his power, under his control. No. You, you, you listened to the lies and gave in to the deception, and now you're reaping the consequences of those things. And yet those things can be broken right now. When what? For it's the truth that sets us free. But it's just not one little doses of truth. You must live by truth. Walk in the truth. Eat the truth. Love the truth more than anything else. And when you do that, then you will walk in victory. Will I say that you will not struggle, that Satan won't try to come and lie and steal from you again? Well, sure he will. Because he's done it so many times before. And don't be surprised that, that as you, when you make a step and make a stand not to do that anymore, that, hey, tomorrow morning, hey, it may be before you even leave this building that Satan comes and lies to you. You know, that was just all fluff. He was like, Pat, you don't have to listen to him. You know, he, 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 he don't know what he's talking about. Max, some of you might be even thinking that right now. I got it. I got it all under control. He's, see, Satan's convinced you think that you're in control when in reality you're not. See, the devil has yet to be cast into the lake of fire, but he will be cast into the lake of fire. But until that time comes, if he can lie to you and steal from you, and <laughs> he's going to do it. And if he, could, if he could kill you, kill your body, kill your soul, kill your spirit, he will do it. But the only way he can do it is for you to listen to his lies and his deceptions.
Amen? Come on. Don't shout me down. Jeez. Wow, this is, this is like this is like nuclear warfare, what we're talking about here this morning against the enemy of your soul. You have an enemy of your soul. You know, you live in so, so much fear of your family and your future and what's going to happen and your finances and where are we going to be in 10 years from now and what's going to happen and, you know, you waste so much time. When there's so much that God can do in your life now. Uh, Galatians, we just have two verses and then we're going to close. Galatians chapter 2 verses 13 through 15. And notice the first word, and you. Now, I could have gone and started up reading. We could re- read the whole chapter, but just for sake of time, read the whole chapter. This is great. This is great news, okay? And you, being dead in your trespasses, is that referring to, that's referring to all of us, <laughs> okay? Okay? You were, we, we were that way. We were, we were what? We were dead. In our trespasses, sins, inequities, and so forth. In the uncircumcision of our flesh. All right? He has made alive together with him. Who's, who's done that? God. Through him. Through Jesus Christ. And notice what he's done. He's forgiven you of all. You know, stop living in the shame of your past. My goodness gracious, I don't care if it's one hour before you came into church. Get before God and say, God, you know, forgive me for that. And it's done. Notice he's forgiven you of all transgressions. Some of you are still lingering on the stuff that you did in the past because you just think it's just way too big for God to forgive. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. You know, look at the law. The law. He's talking about that. All the thing, all the laws that you broke. We are lawbreakers. Every single one of us. And according to the old covenant, man, we deserve what? Death. We get what we deserve. But Jesus Christ comes and by the grace of God, and that's what grace is, not getting what you deserve. Amen? And praise God. And he says, and so what did he do? He wiped it out. He wiped out all that law breaking, all that lawlessness. Your spirit, your heart, you were driven towards it. He wiped it out, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. I mean, it's gone, my friends, okay? Listen, but it gets better. It gets better. I mean, we've only begun. Having nailed it to the cross, it's nailed. He's not going back to the cross anymore, amen? It was one and done. He took care of everything. Now, notice how what he includes in this. This is all about us. Praise God. But he also wants you to know this, that he has disarmed all principalities and powers and rulers and demons and whatever else that can come against you. They have been what? Disarmed! (laughs) Hallelujah! And all he can do to you is lie to you. All he can do is just lie to you now. He can't do anything. He can't. He spoiled them. Having disarmed, and I think it's the King James word. You like that? I think it's the word spoiled. They're rotten. (laughs) (coughs) Notice what it goes on. He made a public spectacle of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Triumphant them over them. Hallelujah. He spoiled them. Satan, principalities, demonic powers, they have been spoiled. You know, the, the devil may carry a big gun, but he's only got blanks. He's got nothing in there, nothing that can hurt you except for what? The lies, the sound of a gun, which is what? The roaring lion who roars like a lion, but he's not a lion. We serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's a counterfeit, and he tries, to, he tries to convince you that he is equal powers with the Lamb of God. And he's not. Hallelujah. And through the cross and resurrection, Jesus stripped the devil of all power, all authority. 
the, you know, when he comes to the disciples after it's all done, before he, he said, man, hey, you're going to go start the church pretty soon. What's the first thing he said? All authority and all power is what? He reclaimed everything that was lost through the fall. And he made a public spectacle of the enemy. The first Adam may have surrendered his power and authority, but the last Adam took it back. Amen? You know, and so now Satan, Satan has no power. He has no authority over the blood-bought, spirit-born-again people. Amen? But he's still lying to the religious, okay? He's still, and his only weapon is deceit and lies. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Some of you are saying, well, you know, I just can't do this. I just can't, I just can't, I, I can't, no, I just can't, I can't live that way. That's a lie of the enemy. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that same spirit lives in you. And you need to start speaking that spirit that lives in you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk in holiness. I can resist the devil. I can resist whatever temptation and whatever lore, whatever, tr whatever he sends my way. And like I said before, many of it will come through your friends. That's okay. You know, you know. I rebuked them after I rebuked the devil, okay? He, he, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. He knew what was going on. Now listen to this. He made a public spectacle of them. Hallelujah. Triumphant. Triumphant. Triumphing. I guess some of these words don't come out right. Over them. Literally, this refers to a triumphant procession. And uh, I, I love what Andrew Womack speaks about this here. And uh, he talks about it being a victory parade. Isn't it great? Let me just read this here. This is so good. You need to hear this. Because you need to see this in your spirit, man. How defeated Satan really is. You know, the Romans, when they would go out to war against their enemy back in those days, after defeating the army, now they, they would have to be totally defeated. And what they would do then is that they would try to, try to keep the king king alive and what they would do is that they would strip the opposing king strip him butt naked just imagine that that's humiliating amen now remind you this is what he's done to the devil and he's using this as an illustration of what of these people knew what that triumphant procession was because they probably saw it many times in rome okay maybe not so much in jerusalem but i'm sure they heard about it and so they would take the king and they would strip him butt naked, and they'd actually remove his thumbs and his big toes so that he would never be able to what? Hold a sword again, nor even walk right or run. Totally re removed his power. That's what it really speaks about, removing his power, humiliating him, that he could never hold a sword or stand in battle, and that they would parade him through the streets, par parade him openly through the streets where the people would mock and spit at him, and the purpose of this parade was to completely remove any doubt that their foe was defeated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus left no doubt when he stepped out of the tomb. He made a public spectacle, triumphantly parading that Satan is forever defeated. Hebrews chapter 2. Listen to this verse. Oh, you'll get revelation this morning from these verses. Oh, Ephesians 2, verses 14 and 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood. That's us. You got flesh and blood? He himself likewise shared in the same he was the son of man. Amen. He had flesh and blood just like us. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was flesh and blood. He was the son of God, the son of man. That through death, listen, 
he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those through the fear of death. And can I just simply add, that is the ultimate, is man, the ultimate thing that man fears is what? Death. And so can it, can, it, can it be reasonable to think that if he destroyed death, he destroyed everything else? Everything else. Everything else that you fear this morning, he what? He destroyed. That's good news. Amen. Come on. That's good news. You know, the Bible tells us this is what Jesus did to the devil. That he completely, totally absolutely defeated him. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ delivers man. It delivers us from death, not just the power of death, but the fear of death. And it is fear that he says what? That the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I think we ought to stand to our feet. I think we ought to lift up a victory shout. Amen. Anybody here want to lift up a victory shout this morning? Come on. Somebody lift up a victory shout in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift up a victory shout in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, he made a spectacle, a public spectacle of the devil. Your enemy, your foe, he's defeated. Put him under your feet and keep him there. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Whoa, this is, this is good news. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, no more fear. But you know what? That's not where we begin because fear, fear is a byproduct of the lies. So we got to deal with it on the very root level. You know, we can, you know, you know, we can, we can bind the spirit of fear and do all that kind of stuff. And that's good because we're going to do that. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't commit yourself to truth, fear will come back. Fear in whatever way that it leads you into bondage, it's going to bring you right back to where you are before unless you commit to what? You commit to truth. And Jesus Christ is truth. He is truth. And his word is truth. His tr Let me, you got to understand this. His word is life to you. And your life depends upon it. We need to really get to that place where we understand that my life depends upon the word of God. And if you are not at that place, then I pray that you would get to that place. You know, and now if you need to go and just play, be dancing with the devil a little bit more until you realize that you're not going to win this on your own. You're not going to win it with your intelligence, your education, or whoever you think you might be. You're, you're going to lose every single time. And then maybe you'll get back to that place and say, you know what I need in my life? I need truth. I need to sit down and I need to get into the word of God. I need to commit to the word of God. I need to commit to where the, tr where, where the word is being preached. I need to commit to being Bible study. I need to commit to the word of God. And when you start committing to the word of God, let me just tell you, your life, your life will change. Now, I'm not saying that he's, he's going to let up and he's not going to come around. And he's not going to try to sow those thoughts. You know, he's not going to try to revisit things familiar things that have taken you down before. He's going to try, but don't listen to him because he's a liar and there's no truth in him. You're a child of God. I am, he is, I am his beloved. I am his creation. And he loves me exactly the way, the way that you are this morning. And he did not make, he did not make a single mistake. He has called me chosen. I am his beloved. And let me tell you, when you stand, when you stand with the word of God in front of you, you can stand against anything. But if you got the word of God behind you, you're going to fall. You're just not going to, you're just not. My friends, you need to hear this this morning. If you have a casual commitment, just a, just a very lazy approach to the word of God, and it's nothing more than just simply laziness. 
then you need to change. You need to repent of that right now. And I'm going to lead you in the prayer. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray and I ask God that, God, that truth, truth will resonate in this house and that you will commit to the word of God. God, that we commit to truth this morning because it's the truth that sets us free. And it's the lack of truth and lack of understanding that, that I always seem to stump, be stumbling right back in the same pit, the same hole that I found myself out of. And by the grace of God, he pulls me out, but because I don't reinforce my life with the truth, I find out I go right back to the same stuff. And that's going to stop this morning. That's going to stop through the authority because when you speak, and I don't care, you don't have to have a lot of faith. The Bible tells you if you have faith the side of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain. Yes. So whatever word you have in you right now, you begin to speak that word out in authority because it is not based upon your authority. It's based upon what Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross and what he did. Every word that he said is true, amen, and it's applicable for you. And so, God, I just release this word right now into this place, God. Lord, the power of your word as we speak it, God. Lord, God, we will see, we will see victory, we will see change break. God, slavery be gone in the name of Jesus. Father, I bind fear, I bind that spirit, that familiar spirit, God, that, Lord, that just c continues just to, just to bring, bring people into captivity of one thing or the other. And Father, I just bind that right now in the name of Jesus. Son, son, son of God, daughter of God, listen to me. Now you say this with me. I am free. Come on, say this with me. I am free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thy word, listen to me. Come on, say this. Thy word is spirit and life. I must learn. Come on, say, I will learn thy word. I will speak thy word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, it's just excited just to go home and open up your Bible and start reading it. I mean, some of you, some of you, just, that's what you need to do this afternoon. Some of you, that's what you need to do. You just need to get home and get quiet, get in a place and open up and dust off that Bible. And then dust off the table because it's embarrassing to see that nice little clean spot on your end table. Where the Bible is sat. And read that thing. And understand that it's not just words. See, we open it up as this word. Oh, this, this word. No, it's spirit. It's spirit. Begin in, begin in the Gospels. Start in the Gospels. Open it up. Start at Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read, read the epistles. Just read it. I tell you what, I don't care what page you're on. The Spirit of God can speak to you through that if you open it up. If you don't open it up, he can't do nothing. If you don't open it up, there's nothing. Please, please. I'm not saying that we're just going to walk in instant victory in every area of our life, but this is the path. Can you hear what I'm saying? This is the path. This is how we're going to walk in victory. Next weekend, we have a, we're going to have a great time together. I want you to come. I want you to bring a friend. I want you to bring someone who, who needs to be touched of God. I'm going to ask you that if you would spend some special time fasting Take a few days, maybe this week, and miss a few meals and, and be praying and be, and be fasting. And just believe that God, God's going to, he, he's going to be here. Yes. Amen? Amen? I mean, it's, it's a done deal. The Spirit of God's going to be here. Amen? But, but that hearts of, hearts of people will be what? Will be responsive. The hearts and lives will be responsive and hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 Why don't you take the hand of someone next to you? Jason, come and close us in a word of prayer, would you please? Hallelujah. Let's just seal this word up. Let not the enemy steal this word from you. It's going to be on face, Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. Listen to it again, okay? Please. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. Oh, Lord, we're just so fired up this morning. 
We just want to thank you and praise you this morning for what you did, Lord Jesus. You destroyed him who had the power of death. Hallelujah. You conquered death. You conquered sin. You conquered sickness. You conquered everything that could come against us in this life, Lord Jesus. And you were victorious and you arose out of that tomb. Victorious. Praise God. We just want to praise you and thank you this morning, oh Lord. And we want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. So, Father, I just ask you to bless these dear people of God. The words that were spoken today, Lord, let these seeds that were planted go in deep, take root, and bear amazing fruit for the kingdom of God. And we just thank you and praise you for all these things. And all of God's people said, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.